This is Don't Panic, episode number 213, recorded August 6th, 2018. Pi low, sell high. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Don't Panic, the technology podcast on gadgets, the internet, and you. I am Sean Jennings, and I am joined, as always, by two guys who will always eat a pie cooling on the windowsill. It is Colby Ravidu and Dan Miller. Gentlemen. Uh, I've never encountered a pie cooling on a windowsill, Me however. Either. I can say with confidence, if I did, I would definitely eat it. Just just random pies on windows? Yeah. I wonder if uh, people leave trap pies on their windowsills. Oh. I can imagine Colby, there's like a cardboard box held up by a stick with a string. <laughs> and there's a pie under it. Ooh, smells so good. <laughs> Gets me every time. Are yeah, you guys big no. pie fans? Of course. Yeah, what's 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 your what's your uh, favorite kind of pie? Not I like go to pies with any sort of like fruit filling. I'm all about that. I'm less about I'm less about most other kinds of pies, but pumpkin pie is fine. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> pumpkin pie is fine. It's fine. It's good. Have you ever had sweet you potato me... pie? No, that shit is good. It looks exactly like pumpkin pie, but it tastes. Two to, like yeah. Two to three times better. Two to three times better. I do like sweet potatoes. I'm gonna have to. Try I will say, I I recently had pumpkin pie that was made of fresh pumpkins, and it was way better than pumpkin pie that was made from pumpkin yeah. in a can. Yeah, you gotta do the fresh, even with fruit yeah, or any pumpkin. kind of. You you gotta keep it fresh. No yep. fooling. Yeah, I gotta give it up for for the pecan pie. I think cream pies are a crappy pie. Don't give me keep oh, your yeah, cream pies absolutely. at home. That's what I was trying to think of. I was like, there's some sort of dessert pie looking. Yeah. But what about what about Boston cream pie? No. But that's more of a cake. It's not it's really true. a pie. I call bullshit. <laughs> I call shenanigans Boston. You know, I went to the hotel where they invented Boston cream pie in Boston. Had the Boston cream pie there. Really? It was very mediocre. <laughs> What hotel is it? It's the uh, it's the Omni. Uh, it's got a it's it's part of the Omni chain. I don't know. It has a fancier yeah. name than that. Who knew? But um, yeah, it, it's it's a horrible. It's not a horrible. That's not fair. It what is hotel a is it? Crappy hotel. Don't go to the hotel. But the Boss Pie is also not good. You just shouldn't go there in general. Anyway, <laughs> guys, what's uh, what's uh, what's uh, going on? What's the uh, what's the uh, what's the uh, scope? It's so hot here in humid. It is. My watch said 100 degrees at one point, but I don't think that's. It can't have gotten that hot. That's it's crazy. I, I, that's shocking. I was in an Uber on Thursday, and and the driver told me it was 105, which I don't believe. But those car, if he was looking at his car thermostat, those things was. are always you way might as well higher. Not than... have them at that point. They're so unreliable. Yeah. If they give you a rough estimate, you could tell if it was 40 degrees versus 80. You could tell that ish. Yes. Um, I would have believed that it was about 100, maybe, or yeah. close to 100. 105 seemed ex- excessive. Uh, yeah, so it's really hot. Let's see. What else is going on? I have a question. How, how would you, how do you, speaking of the weather, are you typically warm, cold in your respective offices at, at this point in the year? So cold. So, so I cold. Wear, I wear long sleeves. So cold. They rolled up for the show. but <laughs> Yeah. Okay, we're, we're in the same boat. The, the uh, co-working space that we're in came by and dropped off like, hey, here's some, some free co-working space swag. And we Those all took the sweaters. No, there was the sweat <laughs> hoodies. We were like, oh. yes, hoodies. Now, like, we don't have to worry about bringing a sweater. And I had already had a sweater in that I kept at my desk. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm not alone well, in this. Well, I, I think office workers know what people in the Northeast have known for generations, which is layering. Layer <laughs> constantly, because it is... I've never met more unreliable technology than, like, commercial HVAC. Because it, yeah. it's always too hot or too cold or an oscillator. It seems like very easy to mess up in an irreversible way. Oh, it's crazy. 
and you would always call somebody and it's too hot and then they'd fix it be too cold it just it never and the, the problem i have in my office is my office is literally attached shares a wall with a giant factory <laughs> and so the hvac is we share an hvac so it makes things very zany um it's not the worst i've been in but it's uh <laughs> it's it's not pleasant that's pretty interesting um so i'm lucky enough to so my office is a pretty old building and i sit next to a window so sorry i couldn't even get to the <laughs> mute button fast enough um i sit next to a window and i get I, it's a pretty big window i get some sun so it my desk usually isn't too bad but the problem is i always forget every time i go to a meeting that it's going to be like 10 degrees colder in whatever meeting room and i and once you're in there it's too late you can't like bail out and go go get a sweatshirt mm -hmm. so that's that's yes. how they get me that's what happened today i had a a new phenomenon somewhat related where uh i happened to be plugging something into the back of my imac and i noticed there was like this streak on the back of something and i'm like what the hell like this greasy substance I'm like, what the heck is this? And I kind of look behind the computer, and there's a little bit of this, like, kind of, like, bluish, greasy liquid on my desk. And I'm like, what the hell is this? And I look up. There is a sprinkler head right above my desk of the fire system that is dripping mystery liquid on top of my Mac and my Ooh. desk. City juice. Yes. It is, <laughs> it is oily, and it is foul. And mm. uh, they hopefully will be sending somebody to look at that. But it was, it was dripping right on top of the Mac. I'm like that. Mm. So I kind of just shifted the computer forward a little bit. And I'm like, all right, hopefully they can take care of that. Now, I've heard that um, contrary to what you see on TV, when sprinkler systems go off in buildings, it is really horrifying mm -hmm. because it's just like stagnant water that's been sitting there since whenever the building was constructed. Yeah, and that's absolutely oh. what it is. And I even think that bluish color comes from the copper in oh. the fixture is actually like coming off um, and that color copper can get. So it's moldy. It's just, it's very, again, unpleasant. Mm -hmm. It sounds unpleasant, Sean. Yeah, the fun the fun side of working in an office. Sounds like fun. Oh, it's it's a blast and a half. It's blast, but it can't be. I mean, Dan, working in a co working space has got to be a blast. It's got to it's got to just be a hoot and a holler every day, meeting new uh, people, hanging around with all these other companies. It collaborating can be. and innovating. It can be that uh it's honestly not that bad like you you can't you're never going to be in an actual office if you work at a tech company anyways so True. it's honestly no different if you worked at facebook or google it would it would feel very similar physically so whether it's people that you are also you are also employed by the same company that they're employed by or not doesn't really matter uh yeah I don't know. I don't know how much to say here. <laughs> oh, okay. I've told some stories. Uh, to okay. So my last co-working space. Did I tell you about the sleeping guy at the last co-working space? I don't think so. Not that I recall. Okay, so there was this guy, and over time I learned that he was he he never talked to anyone, so he was paying. Uh, well. Okay, so he never talked to anyone. Therefore, I assume that he was working by himself since he never talked to anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, and he used to sit like one row in front of me in diagonal, so I could I could look at his monitor whenever I wanted to. And he was always watching YouTube videos, not like frivolous YouTube videos. They didn't. They looked like serious -y YouTube videos. He YouTube, LinkedIn, YouTube, LinkedIn. And then he would leave. But he would also he would also take some naps. So he sometimes he'd be watching YouTube or even a staring at LinkedIn, and the head would just go down. <laughs> this dude sounds awesome. And then it would stay there. It wouldn't, wouldn't be for like a minute or two. It would stay there for like 15, 20 minutes. And it would come back up. And, and he would also, the thing I, I'm pretty sure that he wasn't working with anyone because he never even took a video call that I saw. 
But he would also hand his check, and I looked it up. The rates for being a single person in this co-working space is like, I, I don't know. It was an outrageous amount of mm-hmm. money. Uh, he would he would give the check to the office manager manually, which I also thought was strange. Uh, so that, that was one weird story. The other weird story uh, is in this current co-working space, there are two people, again, they sat in the row in front of me. So I have... I have full visibility into their lives. I know everything. Uh, I, have... I, I, <laughs> I know when they leave their desk and when they come back. And this was the thing that blew my mind. These two people, they started at exactly the same time. And they went everywhere together, which which isn't in itself unusual, right? Because, oh, they're both on the same team, maybe. Uh, and they, they're in the same meetings, so they're going to the same places. But they would also go to the bathroom together. Not, like, in the same stall, but they would, like, in concert. It's bathroom time sleeping time and that was kind of weird but i was like okay you know if they're all in the same meetings and maybe they're in they got a lot of meetings it seemed there's only so many times you can use the bathroom so that's not that surprising but then the thing that really weirded me out was when they were <laughs> they were brushing their teeth together in the bathroom there's both of them from the thing brushing their teeth and yeah i think that's cute i think they're like they're like a bonded pair of kittens you Aww. know you sort of it can't get one without. They were probably hired together because of that. Those are those are my two co-working stories. Wow. Oh, I that's really I sweet. Have, I don't think I have other ones. No, it's too cold. Uh, now, yeah, that's about it. Now, Colby, before we came on the air, you had a bit of a medical emergency. Mm. Yeah. But for the second time in Don't Panic History. Wait, is <laughs> that true? What was the first medical Did the emergency? knife incident happen around a Don't Panic episode, or was that just... Maybe. I don't remember. I honestly, I don't remember. That is a way better medical medical emergency, <laughs> because I took the bus to to uh, <laughs> urgent care. I did, I did some quick mental math, and I decided there was not going to be a $150 cleaning fee for a, for a bus, which, where there would be for an I'm Uber. I'm sure that wasn't the worst thing that's been spilled oh, on that bus. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I didn't bleed anywhere, so it was it would it wouldn't have been a problem either way. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I had a, I had a small splinter. I feel like splinters are one of those things like smallpox and polio that I thought we had eradicated. And I didn't I didn't <laughs> I realize people could so long where you would even yeah. get one. I didn't I didn't have my vaccines as a child. My parents my parents didn't believe in that. You know the funny thing is, is that true? Like I <laughs> my but, splinters vaccines. Oh, uh, but actually, I, I, I know knowing your parents. Like if you had told me that, I've been like, that's not the craziest thing I've heard. <laughs> no, they're all due respect to them. people. They are. Yeah, they are a little quirky, but yeah. But I'm I'm glad you they're... you live to tell the tale. <laughs> yes, me too. Could have been much worse. Very cool. Yep. All right. Any other banter? Um, no. I, I recommended Breath of the Wild, uh, the Z- new Zelda game for the Switch a while back, probably over a year ago. In fact, it was definitely over a year ago. Mm-hmm. And I finally, like, I had been saving it for airplane rides, and not this past weekend, but the weekend before, I finally, like, gave in because I was feeling very introverted and didn't want to do anything. I was like, okay, I'll sit down and play this game at home instead of on a plane. And, man, it's a really good game. <laughs> uh, yeah. If you if you like those open-worldy kind of games and puzzles and stuff like that. do you it's... Now, do you mostly play it on the Switch screen, or do you dock it? and play it oh i dock it i dock it all day long okay. and like I, on the train I, on the train well on the train and on a plane oh and I'll on a it. and yes. on a bus and on a boat and on a horse I haven't done it on a bus or a boat yet though that would be cool mm. um what was i gonna say i've been i've been i've been uh pimping my switch to get ready for the new Smash Bros. game, so I bought a giant... You can get 256 gigabyte SD cards now. They're not even ridiculously expensive. Micro SD cards. The itty, it's itty, incredible. Teeny, 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 tiny ones. Uh, I got the little Ethernet adapter. So, yeah. Anyways, I usually play it docked. It, it's higher resolution. It's 
you can sit on the couch. Feels nicer. Couch life. Couch life. Oh, two weekends ago, couch life. Whew. I felt great. <laughs> Ready, revived. Good I to go. Done absolutely nothing in so long. Well, now we can use some of that energy on the week's tech news, Dan. And we've yes. got a bunch of stories here in the rundown while you guys look at those. I want to thank everybody who's joining us live right now on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Don't Panic Show and on Twitch at Twitch.tv slash Don't Panic Show. We're live Monday nights about 10, 15 Eastern time. Join in the fun. Watch the show live. Enjoy the stream. And you can comment in our Twitch chat or comment on Facebook, and we might talk about you on the show, though we don't promise it. Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, story number one, gentlemen. Drum roll, please. Where are we going to start? Let's start with Movie Pass because I've really gotten into this story over the past week. I it didn't really been care about story. it before. It has been every day. There's something. If if their only goal was to get press, they yeah. succeeded. Because <laughs> every day there's a story. Um, Movie Pass. We talked about them a while back on the show. We haven't really done an update in a while. They were the pay one price and get all the movie tickets you want service was the theory. Um, and the way they made money was selling your personal information to advertisers like anyone makes money on the Internet. Uh, well, they ran into issues. It started with what came first? They ran out of money. I think that was the first thing. They ran out of money uh, and had to go get they started declining tickets and running out of money. So they had to run and get some emergency money. Then they cut people off of seeing Mission Impossible Fallout because it was costing them too much money. And that pissed people off. And then they announced that they were going to uh, increase the price and have surge pricing. So new release movies oh, would would be like you had less showing options for those. They had all these new restrictions. Then they came out this week and said that instead of doing that fourteen ninety five price increase, they're going to ha- continue at nine ninety five a month, but you'll be limited to just three movies, which was a service they previously offered at a seven ninety five price point. The plan goes into effect on August 15th. Um, eventually, everyone will have to move down to that when either their monthly or annual subscription ends. They are also adding limitations or, to seeing newly released movies during the first two weeks of the theatrical run. Oof. Now, I will also point out that AM, is it AMC is t- testing their Stubbs A-List program, which I think for $20 a month gets you three movies a week. That's okay. so many movies. That's yeah, that's a lot of movies. Well, so MoviePass says, and now that they've moved to this three a month thing, they've claimed that about 85% of their users saw three movies or less a month. So they think that this will be a good plan for folks because it covers the majority of them. Mm. Cool. Um, wow. Hi. Uh, so- Oh. I was going to say, I haven't seen a movie since, like, March, maybe. Wow. February, April, I don't know. I, I honestly don't remember. I just know I went to a movie at some point. That's maybe not. Star Wars? Like, when did Star Wars come out? That was May. No, The Last Jedi? No, 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 yeah, The no. Last Jedi. Oh, I, I, I didn't December. see Solo. Did you see Black you Panther? You still haven't seen Solo? I saw Black Panther after post theaters. Uh, okay. You still haven't seen Solo? I haven't either. And I'm not in any real rush, if I'm being honest. Uh, uh, it was good! I'm sure it was fine. They're all fine. They do an okay job. Uh, I'm so depressed. <laughs> but Colby, why don't you go to the movies? I don't know. I like the movies sometimes. I guess it's more of a winter thing than a summer thing, maybe. Sure. Though, I don't know. It's probably a good, like, 100-degree day thing. That's true. I just, I guess maybe I just haven't had that many free weekends recently. Maybe that's the problem. Well, I know that's the reason I, I never go to movies either. Uh, very rarely and the reason is is because i hate the experience and i don't like doing it and i've talked about this on the show before that a movies give me headaches because that's that's probably the screen is too big and my Mm. eyes can't handle it uh and b i just don't know why i have to drive from my house to a theater somewhere to see a movie i can just watch at home in three months or six months 
<laughs> it's and I have a 4K TV at home that looks fantastic. So I don't. Mm. I'm not. It's so, not really adding much for me. I like the the theater that was closest to my old apartment. They had most of their theaters were like the reserved seating recliner seats. Yeah. Uh, and the theater had a bar, so you could have a beer, a comically large beer, because it was it's a movie theater after all. Right. And I'm sure they charged um, fourteen dollars for that beer. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> but it, at least it was it was like the same price as a beer at the baseball game would be, but it was twice as large as a beer as the baseball game at the baseball game would be. That's why I always loved about um, movie theaters was that all the food was crazy expensive, but also crazy right, huge. And I'm like, couldn't right. you just give me less and charge me yeah. less? Like, I, <laughs> like it's right. one thing if you're like blatantly ripping me off, but this is it, it. Kind of was a value if you wanted that much. Yeah. Which is you don't want that much. It's very <laughs> weird. I don't understand the economics. <laughs> yeah. Um. So like that I like a lot because there's no pre- – you don't have to get there before the cre- before the previews. Sure. Um, you have your own space. It reclines. It's not even that bad to sit like further up because like you can recline to whatever like angle is appropriate. Um, so yeah, I'm have a fan you, of that. Have you ever done a movie like, in the love seat theaters? Oh, oh. yeah. Those are weird. Who is that? Why did why do that? Uh, like weird. I don't know. Yeah, that's yeah, that's why. That it, it's but it is it's for someone who goes to movies alone. It's very odd. Oh yeah, it's not <laughs> a good time. No. <laughs> Have you gone to one of those? Honestly, alone? no. Yeah. I went to Gu- I saw Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two in one of those super fancy schmancy Dolby like eight K blow your mind test theater in houston and i had to sit next to some kid in one of those love seat things and it, and the whole time i'm like kind of scrunched up to my side because i'm like this is not a good setup. oh i i would not have considered that you might be with a person you didn't know in the love seat yep oh they're gonna fill that thing yep don't leave any money on the table fair enough nope. so i think that no like Going, uh, I guess going to a movie by yourself is okay, but it still feels. No, you know what? Never mind. I've done it and it's fine. Except in those love seat or like Alamo Draft House has the uh, the two uh, seats that are kind of separated by a table that's really really tiny, but they're sort of meant to be taken together. If you don't do that, it's fine. Or if you manage to get yourself next to a group of three, it's it's ideal. But otherwise, I, I feel like, yeah, the movie theater, movie pass, it's such a losing proposition. And what I don't understand, is I like, there's no way that mo- our movie theater is going to be around in t- 50 years? 50. Five zero. What do you think? We've talked about this on the show before. I, I think, think we have. I think... I think they'll keep finding enough. You know, like, I have always wanted to try, and I haven't before, like, the 4DX theaters. Are you familiar with these? I almost did a spit take. How many, how many of these are you up to now? Okay, now, 4DX, and it's there's another name. It's got, it's got two competing formats, and there's another name for it. Something box? I can't think of it. 4DX. Now, what's, the, what's the fourth D? Is it smell? Okay. Is it... Is it taste? Oh, Dan, it's all of them. Okay, it's it's oh, it's, it's it's like those theme parks. So the so the seats they 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 they're on pistons, so they move around. They shake like stuff will poke out of the back, and like if a character gets what? stabbed, like it'll push it'll oh god push on your it'll I like don't spray it'll spray water or wind. It'll really we sense. We've proven that we don't want 3D movies, <laughs> and we don't want that either. I want to try it. I've never tried it though. Come on, you got. Tr- I've tried 3D movies, and I know I don't like it. But 4D. Yeah, but have you ever gone to Disney and tried that? Like that already exists. You can go do that. It's possible to when, do that. When I, I did go to Disney I, as a kid. I was too afraid. I sat out. Honey, I shrunk the kids. Honey, oh uh, no! The the, the, the the ride that's famous for. Um, but I've never been the... to Disney, but I bet I would be too afraid. Yeah, what to. are we gonna do a dark panic <laughs> trip to Disney, guys? I don't know. Listen, I feel like there's no time like 2019, right? That's what the kids are saying these days. Yeah, they're well, Star Wars Land, if they'll have us. Dan almost I'm did another so spit down take for Star Wars. Oh my god, Star Wars Land. What? Uh, I said you almost did another spit take. I know. I well, it splashed <laughs> up into my face. <laughs> I was so excited for Star Wars Land. <laughs> <laughs> um, that would be 
So, okay, all right. So I don't think movie theaters will be around in 50 years. I don't even know if they'll be around in 20 years, but sure, say they're around forever. What is the, like... And, and I have met these people who do movie pass, and they claim that they like, oh yeah, I go to like, I go to like so many movies. Like I would have a hard time coming up with one movie a month that I would want to go to. And it seems to me that in New York, movie pass would give you a discount on even one if you just did nine ninety nine a month. It's like fifteen dollars for a freaking movie ticket. That aside, even for ten dollars, like ah. But you know, all the movies are so bad or not interesting. But if a service existed where you paid, we'll say nine ninety five a month, and you were able uh-huh. to stream in your home up to three currently in theater new releases, would that be more attractive to you? Because I would do that okay. in a heartbeat. Yeah, yeah, I would do it selectively. I, yesterday, I had a free afternoon to evening, and I was like, you know what I should do? Like, this is the perfect chance to watch a movie. Like, usually I get home at, like, 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, and it feels a little too late mm-hmm. to really start it. But this is the perfect opportunity. And I poked around, and I just didn't watch any. Like, that, I almost watched Thor Ragnarok. I almost watched Black Panther for a second time, because that honestly sounded more interesting so I don't know if, if I, even if it was, because there are so many movies that I haven't seen, because I never watched them in theaters, it's not like I watched a ton of movies anyways. I think the movie is just too long of a commitment. Like, uh, an hour-long TV show, if you want, you can turn an hour-long TV show into 10 hours of TV. That's the beauty of TV shows, if you're really into it. Or even if it's half hour, like, you can sort of put it on and keep going. It feels less like uh, an investment, and like you're kind of stuck in it, and maybe... This is a, like a society problem, a culture problem that we have. But it, I was like, I could watch Thor Ragnarok, or I could finally start watching Atlanta, which is only a half hour for the first episode. And if I don't like it, I can turn it off, which is what I did. Mm, <laughs> I actually, I watched the first and second episode, and then I turned it off because it got too stressful. But I'll talk about that later. Um, no, but see, I kind of have the reverse problem, which is that... I never know what to watch, but what I want to watch right now is Mission Impossible because everyone's talking about how great it is. And then in six they months, are? I, oh, everyone's buzzing. It's the best one in the history of the franchise. <laughs> you let, buzz at all. You'll have to tell me what the round. T- I didn't even look up the score, but everyone's like, this is the, fr- it's one of the best franchise. Everyone is super jazzed about it. So I want to watch it now. In six months, I'm not going to want to watch it. That's the Is Tom Cruise still in those? Yes, he's they doing the, he's jumping do out things. of the planes. He's doing the Who got Mission stunts? Impossible in the movie draft? Uh, Colby did. Yeah. Shit, and it dog. Did go- it did good. It did good. Not quite Jurassic Park money, which Colby also owned, but... Um, you got 97% in Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, it's the what? sixth film in the franchise. <laughs> well, they, the, the, the classic sixth film in the franchise. You're right. Comeback. Almost as good as the... <laughs> Never mind. We weren't on the air for the uh, Hatchet references. No. Oh. Yes, kids of the 90s will remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know there are five hatchet books, Colby, and I read all of them. Really, I definitely read the first one. Uh, okay, so anyway, Sean, you you would be into that, but you're not into uh, movie pass as it is, just because you don't like the movie theater experience. I, I like there's... watching new movies. I don't like going to the theater. Right, and there's nothing. What could a movie theater change such that you would like going to them? What would you? What would be your proposed The problem is patch. everything I would describe would just end up sounding like my living room, where it's like, okay, but I don't want any other people there, and I want the screen to be smaller, so, <laughs> and I want to be able to pause I, the movie in the middle. Right. I think, I agree. Like, the pausing thing, like, the freedom, you can go to the bathroom whenever you want. Like, that's the big thing, especially at Alamo Draft House. Like, okay, cool, you get to go and order these, like, awesome boozy shakes and cocktails and beer. But I don't want to because then I'll have to go to the bathroom and they can't pause the movie. So I never do. Uh, but do you know there's no movie that you like? There are certain movies I like watching with people and some that I don't. And there's no movie that you like watching with people? It's You feel that it's enhanced by it at all or is it always... These days, like, I, I, I did really enjoy when I saw... It wasn't as big for The Last Jedi, but when I saw The Force Awakens 
Everyone cheered yeah. and was really excited. That was fun. But there aren't I seeing Avatar in theaters for as garbage of a movie as that is. I did leave the theater thinking like, wow, I saw something really spectacular here today, visually, <laughs> not story wise, dialogue wise, character wise, <laughs> any of that. But rarely that happens. But all the Marvel movies are they're the same. All the Star Wars movies, they they all start to all the they all start to blend together after a while, and then there's nothing like Deadpool two came out, and I'm like the first one was good. At some point, I'll watch the second one, but like, why would I like go out of my way to go to a theater to see this? Right. You know, give me something. But like The Shape of Water, which I loved, I thought that was a fantastic movie. I watched at home. Would it have been that much better if I'd seen it in a theater? I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. The, so my apartment complex has like a weird like theater room with like a projector that is smaller than a movie projector and like chairs. Mm. Allegedly, I can use it. I never have. You should throw your own movie nights. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that's what I should do. We can screen yes. movies. Uh, I'll charge. I'll charge fifteen. You can. Buy, <laughs> I'll have my own version of Movie Pass. <laughs> Where you can Ooh. come come watch movies that are already out. Uh, but maybe they'll have an intermission in the middle so you can take a break if you yes, need. Yes, globally an intermission. Someone on Twitter was pitching the other day. They're like, now that movies are two and a half hours long again, we need intermissions back. And I'm like, that's not the worst idea. Yeah. That Why would be so that would be so exciting, right? Think of the things you could do with a movie. Ooh. Hello? He was uh, so hi. excited. Oh, I, I pressed. I pressed the. Uh, I don't know what I pressed. Uh, imagine you're in the movie and you knew that halfway through everyone has to stop watching. Yeah. I mean, it would it would kind of get formulaic. Uh, but what would be really cool is if you, as a movie producer, got to decide exactly when the intermission was. Which I guess you do. But if you could, maybe it's a quarter of the way through. Whatever works for the story. Right. Right. I think that's great. Concession stands would love it. Yeah. Honestly, this is an amazing idea because Alamo Draft House, they get to make money off of you the entire time you're sitting there because you can order stuff at any point. Yep. But the movie theater, they can only get you on the way in. If you want something else, you're not going to get it. And it's not like you're going to stop by the concession stand for a Snickers bar on the way out because yep. you can get it cheaper at the 7-Eleven or whatever. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. Let's get a petition going. Change.org. I think this just means that we should open a movie theater, just a shittier Alamo draft house. I love that uh, I love that Zach in the Twitch chat says, imagine after intermission recaps where we last <laughs> left our hero previously on this movie. <laughs> then you could do the, the sort of all-day marathons really well. Yeah, and then you just have so many breaks in between. That's a really good idea. Right, right. Uh, awesome. Yeah, I, I, I think Colby, that if we were to do that, it would be fun to do a, I don't know, a sort of best of the last ten years. There, like, there are so many movies I haven't seen. I've seen maybe about half of the Marvel movies. I've seen all the Star Wars movies, and that is probably it. It's mm -hmm. probably it. I've missed all the Disney movies since. <sighs> Uh, up, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so I, I think you could you could do well with that until the MPAA sues you for illegally broadcasting their films and charging for it, which is super illegal. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why you got to keep it. It's got to be like an underground <laughs> thing, right? It's like <laughs> Colby's it's underground like movie screen invitation on over only broadcasted on the internet. Uh, no, you've never mind. Oh, oh! I talked about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's incriminating. Colby's movie speakeasy. <laughs> Actually, movies, craft cocktails. What more could you ask for? Oh, uh, I agree. I don't know. Making cocktails is kind of noisy, though. Well, the, yeah, that's why you have to have the back room. I don't know if your apartment complex has that. Yeah, Colby, does your apartment complex have the ability to open up a movie speakeasy with built-in bar <laughs> that we can run as a professional there, So business? there is a different room that you can use that has, like, a bar kitchen area. Uh, ah. Which, which, 
Cocktail Party Redux has has crossed my mind. Okay, hang on. We got to get back to the, the story here. Do do you all think that that Movie Pass will survive? And, no, God, no. No. Okay. Oh. All right. Well, Are they still survive? in business now? <laughs> I yeah. I feel like they're not going to be in business very much. All right. If... We we need to put some bets down on what the timeline here is. Now okay. I don't understand how betting works, but I understand that there is. There's some system for doing this, Sean. I feel like you would know. Well, someone you has seem... to. No, the problem is someone has to generate odds, which I don't feel comfortable doing. It would probably be easier <laughs> if we just did it more like a pool, where we just each picked a time. Yeah. And then saw who was right. And I will write it down. So. Okay, I'm gonna say, beginning of November. Okay. Fair enough. Because okay, I won't explain. Yeah, it'll be gone. It'll be gone in the beginning of November. Yeah, they're going to shut it down by the beginning of November, before Thanksgiving. That's what I'll say. Before Thanksgiving. I'm going to say Q1 next year, 2019. It's going to make it all Look at this. Look at this. He's got his flywheels. He's synergizing with his Mm -hmm. his, uh, clan and his cohort and his squad. And he's got a a Q1 deadline dan i just think the subscription acquisition cost is too high they're never gonna make their money back <laughs> and, and i am gonna say uh i'm gonna say i don't think they'll still be in business i will say just so it doesn't it just so it's not too close to dan i will say september 31st oh. that's a good so you so you get kind of a, a a month and a half buffer between us, and it wouldn't surprise me if it were earlier. Now, uh, Zach uh, Zach says that for our uh, movie pass challenge here, that the winner, the person who has the most accurate timeline of when the movie pass service will go out of business, gets uh, a movie pass subscription. Well, no, but no, the two losers <laughs> have to buy the winner a movie pass, like a <laughs> ticket to a movie. Okay. Okay. And I don't have I to like that. Which is funny because none of us want to go to the movies, but. <laughs> I mean, I guess I'd do it if someone bought me a ticket. On us. Uh, so there you go. So that's our movie pass movie pool. <laughs> movie Enjoy. pass movie pool. All right. Well, let's keep chugging along here in the news. We're not, we're not going to get to a lot. Pick the right story because we're not going to get to a lot of them tonight. We went long on movie pass, so. Uh, Pick a winner. I could talk. We could talk about new Android. We could talk about Brookstone. I feel like I do really want to talk about Brookstone, but I feel like we should probably talk about New Android. Mm. New Android's boring. We can get through that pretty quick because we kind of right. covered it when they announced it. Just very quickly, Android 9 Pi is now available, sort of. Uh, what's Ooh, new Pi is, that is bringing it back. This is a callback. They officially named it Pi this time around. Um, however, it's available for Pixel phones today, and that's it. Uh, it hasn't rolled around to uh, other phones quite yet. The headline features, we talked about this back around I.O. It's got the digital well-being dashboard, a gesture-based navigation system, a high enhanced improvements to the UI, a bunch of other small things, new status bar. However, the official release will not include all of these features. Uh, the main things that are missing are the digital well-being features, including the usage dashboard, apps times, and the wind-down setting. Uh, those will be offered as a beta for Pixel users right away. The actual release will come in the fall. Google also says that Android 1 and other devices will get Android 9 Pie in the fall as well. Uh, so right now, really, um, you're just getting hmm. a set of the update um, now on Pixel devices. And for everyone else and for the rest of the features, you got to wait for the fall. Hmm. As if Android versions aren't confusing enough. Right. Weird. Hang on. Look at this. Look at this. Uh... Here, let me let me put it in our in our super secret chat. Look at this idyllic photo of this family sitting down to eat breakfast without any phones visible. Is this? Oh, what? that's explicitly because they say great technology should help, not distract. But I, I feel oh. like <laughs> let's look at let's look at what's going on here. So the two kids are eating cereal and they have orange juice. Okay, there's mm. a very modern looking bowl of strawberries and blueberries in the center of the table that no one is using. The mm. mom is eating oatmeal and has a cup of coffee. The dad has a travel pristine, mug. 
pristine clean plate, not <laughs> anything on it, and then a small plate of toast, of which he may have eaten one, but then put another piece of toast on it so that it's left an awkward spot, and the two parents are drinking coffee. But he's oh, the drinking dad it also, out of a travel mug. But the dad also has a glass of milk that is way too far away from him. Yeah, or maybe the kid for? is double fisting the orange juice and the milk. And the toast isn't really on a plate. It's like in a skillet or something because it it's has sides. Like, yeah. It's like a plate bowl. I'm so confused. <laughs> it, it actually looks like a thing you'd put under a potted plant like mm. to catch the water. Right. It's very weird. <laughs> yeah, and where where are they? At a restaurant? Like, why are they sitting in a booth? And what what restaurant serves cereal? I wonder if it would be cool to have a booth in your house. It would, it seems, no, it wouldn't, because you could never, it would be fixed. You couldn't ever move it. That's true. Yeah, I don't know what this has to do with phones. I'm I'm thoroughly confused. Sean, it says right above, great technology should help, not distract. And look, there's no Google technology or hardware of any what? sort in that yeah, picture. But to be fair, Dan... That did, uh, that photo did distract us from doing the show, <laughs> so... Where did you find the picture? On the android.com slash nine, the official... Uh, yeah. oh. <laughs> oh, I see why you're so confused. I, yeah, I was yeah. an article in the show notes straight to the source. Because I want to read the source, okay? <laughs> I, I want to get... I don't want to be filtered through some, some journalist. I want to read it for myself, and I got distracted by this picture. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh boy! Okay. So that's basically the Android story. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting that they're doing gesture-based things too. Should uh, be a great update when it eventually comes out in its entirety. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Brooke Stone. Brooke Stone. You want to talk about Brooke Stone? We got it. I yes. feel like we've talked about their various bankruptcies before. This time we it's have? for real. I feel like we have. Someone should do an archive search on the rundown because I feel like we've talked about it before. Or maybe that was like archive search. Maybe right it was now. like Sky Mall or Hammocker Schlemmer or something like that. We talked about. <laughs> uh, while you're doing that, Brookstone uh, has filed for its second bankruptcy in four years and will close all 102 of its mall locations across the U.S. The remaining 35 airport stores will stay open as it attempts to find a buyer. In 2014, they sold it to a Chinese conglomerate for 173 million in a bankruptcy auction and has now secured an additional $30 million loan to continue operation during this second sale. Its bankruptcy filing declares debts of up to $500 million in assets between $50 and $100 million. Brookstone's chief executive uh, said in a statement, quote, the decision to close our mall, mall stores was difficult, citing it as an extremely challenging retail environment. What end of an era. End of an era. End of an era. So what, was, what are they going to do now? Just be be like Sky Mall and be online only? Well, they're going to have the airport stores and yeah, probably catalog, catalog, uh, and uh, and in store. I'm going to go to the Brookstone. They must have a website. I'm going to go to it right now and let's look at some things that they have. I mean, Brookstone, of course, known for an odd eclectic mix, massagers. Okay, drones, well, so I'm looking at this Brookstone homepage. Speakers. They've got two Luggage. feet related things right above the fold on the on the homepage. Two feet related things, a Bluetooth speaker and a pizza pool floaty that you could fit probably three people on. Okay, I'm gonna scroll down. We've got headphones with cat ears. Uh, <laughs> two and then two big links on the bottom. Gifts for him and gifts for her. They're both running in opposite directions, but they're wearing athletic clothing and headphones. So this must be athletic things. I'm going to click on gifts for him. Oh, tech gifts for him. Oh, my gosh. Speaking of images, I'm going to put this in the super secret chat also. Look at this image. What a, what a, what a masterpiece. Wow. I want to hang out with those dudes. Oh my god, it's this party scene. There's there's a party going on in the back. There's, there's lights, there's a crowd, and then in front there are three... Well, actually, there are four people. <laughs> Two people. One guy's pointing at the camera. He's kind of in charge. The other guy's hanging off of his arm. There's a person who's completely blotted out by this Bluetooth speaker that we saw on the first page. And then a fourth person you can barely see. 
I like uh, to imagine that, like, the person behind the speaker is, like, the dude on the left's ex-girlfriend or something, and this was his <laughs> attempt to be like, dude, I don't want to see her anymore. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> so there are tech, tech gifts for him, gadget gifts for men, birthday gifts for him, gifts for the guy who has everything. I feel like I am going to look at that. Outdoor gifts for him, massage gifts for him, grilling gifts for him, bar gifts for him, beer gifts for him, best gifts for him, unique gifts for men, not for him. This is all very strange. Yeah, I don't know who this is for. I guess no one, because they went out of business. <laughs> right. Right. Wait, we can. what is the Brookstone Plus platform? Oh, boy. This new platform is a network between Brookstone maker communities, product incubators, global brands, and manufacturing companies. I can, like I can see the article right now. Is Brookstone the new Etsy? No. <laughs> uh, oh, my goodness. The problem I always had with Brookstone is Brookstone just seemed like a crappier version of, like, a Sky Mall or a Hammock or Schlemmer. Except that you could get the free massages. Like, honestly... They got stick. They got. They were sticklers about that in the later years. They didn't oh, let you really? just sit in the chairs. No, they had to actually think you were going to buy one. I mean, how many people so, really bought those Brookstone massage chairs? Well, presumably, oh no my one god, when they've gone out of business. Okay, so you know the next thing I clicked on was the recall page in their footer, right? To read about all their recalls. <laughs> Safety recall. Bucky balls and Bucky cubes. Oh, God, yeah. If two or more of the magnets are swallowed, they can link together inside the oh, intestines. God. And clamp onto body tissues, causing serious internal injury that can lead to death if untreated. That Please return upset. to any Brookstone retail location. Bucky balls? Yeah, have you not seen these before? I have not seen these. No, it's, feeling... it's like a building toy where it was just all these little metal balls that were magnetic, oh, so you could yeah. kind of stack them and arrange them into shapes. And the problem is if you eat a couple of them, they attach to each other inside you and can tear apart mm -hmm. your organs. Um, and they were completely banned from the United States. But yes. I remember the other day, they're trying to bring them back. We'll see uh, that Have goes. they just been, you know, completely shelved, as it were, no pun intended? I think that pun was intended, Dan. Okay. You well, can't lie to me. I'm on to you. I think we should start a spin-off podcast where Dan just describes stock photography. <laughs> stock photography is one of my favorite topics. An audio podcast. It's so... It's one of those things that you... At least me, I for a long time, I trained myself to ignore it. I was like, oh, okay. Woman, woman on light background smiling like oh okay but then you look at the the details that they chose to include like those people they could have just been sitting around a table laughing and then there would have been nothing to talk about like oh look they're having family time they're communicating <laughs> <laughs> but it said they had to stage this whole breakfast uh and t uh tech gifts for him could have just been pictures of the tech gifts but but instead, they had to like, well, what, what, who is this guy? He's going to parties. He has friends, except for that one guy. <laughs> well, we've talked. I, I, was it, I, I picked on the show Dark Stock Photos on Twitter yes. a while back. Mm -hmm. Is that still around? Oh, yeah. They, they don't tweet as much as they used to, but they do still sometimes. They're, uh, they're quite funny. <laughs> Okay, I never followed them, so I am going to click follow You're now. That. They're a hoot. I haven't tweeted since last year. No, I thought I saw something come up today, unless someone retweeted it. Oh, oh never mind. They retweeted a bunch of ones from mm. last year. I see. Yeah, that's the problem with the parody Twitter accounts. They don't really last. Right, like like that one I picked a couple of months ago and ended before it began. I don't even remember what it was. I'm still impressed Epcot Center still tweets. Because that's a great one, and they are still going strong. All these years later. All right, guys, we are out of time on stories. Uh, sorry. Maybe we'll, okay. we'll do more next week. Uh, but we've got to do picks, uh, which is a part of the show where each of us brings something we would like to share with the world. 
uh, something we've been enjoying. And I think it's my turn to go first. Because I said so. Uh, guys, I have a pick this week that is something that no one needs. But it's kind of pretty cool. Are you guys familiar with the United States Postal Service? Yeah. Maybe you've, maybe you've heard of them. Uh, but did you know that after 9-11 and the anthrax scare, that the USPS photographs every single piece of mail and keeps a database of them? I am. I did not I know did. that. Yes, well, the UPS is using their creepy data collection to help you as uh, as a consumer with something called informed delivery. Uh, all you got to do is you sign up, give them your address. It doesn't cost you anything. It's free. And uh, you can do it on the website or they have an app, the informed delivery app. And every day, every morning at about 8, 8.30 a.m., uh, you get an email or an alert on your phone and you can see pictures of the mail you're getting that day. And I will what? show you. It's, this is the most bizarre fucking thing. I will show you. I'm not going to get it too close because I don't. I'm not going to put my address up there. But let me see uh, some pictures of. It's mostly. I most. I get very little mail. It's mostly junk mail. But let's see about some mail I've gotten in the past here. So there's a picture of a letter. So they're like bad Xerox kind of pictures wow. of letters. And so you get a letter. So it'll say you're getting three things in the mail today, and they'll show you like there's a coupon i got for dog food i don't even own a dog but there you go so you get little pictures every single day now you're probably thinking to yourself sean if i'm getting my mail about i don't know six or eight hours after getting these photographs do i really need to know no not really it's not useful at all but it's kind of neat um it'll also track your automatically track your packages um because the UPS, USPS knows it's coming to your door. Obviously, it's just their packages. But you can delay packages and uh, get alerts and things like that. You can also, if you go to the post office and mail something out, you can just scan the barcode on your receipt, and then you can track outgoing packages in the app. So it's free if you get any amount of mail. It doesn't cost you anything to sign up. They're already doing it. So I, I do get a little treat in the morning when I get the email. Ooh, what's going to be in my mail today? And then I'm like, ooh, oh, look, Grandma wrote me a letter. How exciting. <laughs> um, and so... Yeah, check it out. Uh, it's informeddelivery.usps.com or search in the App Store for Informed Delivery, but the link will also be in our website. Yeah. Cool. Cool. <laughs> All right, Colby, you spoke first, so what uh, What are you picking this week? Uh, board game. I, I don't uh... think there's anything to be bored about it. Yeah, so it's called Seven Wonders Duel. It's based on an older board game called Seven Wonders, which is pretty fun. Uh, but Seven Wonders Duel is made specifically for two people. So you can only play it with two people, um, which is cool. It's fun to play. Uh, I feel like a lot of board games have like like the original Seven Wonders, for example, had like a modified version of the rules so you could play with two people. Um, that was kind of like just OK. Uh, but Seven Wonders Duel is specifically for two people, and it's pretty fun. It's sort of like a card drafting game. I'm not going to bother explaining it any more than that. Um, uh, I don't know. If you ever find yourself in need of a two-person board game, it's it's twenty six ninety nine on Amazon. So check it out. Cool. Looks fun. How long does it uh, How long does it take to play? Uh, I think I feel like their estimate is like like 30 minutes to an hour or something or 40 minutes or something like that in practice like the first time you play I feel like it probably takes an hour and a half and then you get faster from there but it's not super long it's not not an, uh, an epic journey nice all right. Yeah. Well, Seven Wonders Duel. I'll have the link on the website, available on Amazon.com or wherever you get your games. Dan, uh, you've got. Uh, I, I don't. Has anyone ever picked a city before? On the show? You're muted, Dan. We cannot hear you. Sorry, a car drove past again. Ah. And... I said that your pick was really cool, Colby, and oh, I'm going to wait for us to put the link up so that I can give us some money before I, before I pass. 
good idea. That's not embezzling, right? Is that or money laundering? It's, yeah. it's, it's embezzling from yourself. <laughs> um, yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, last night I had some free time. I watched. I started watching Atlanta. I had a friend describe it to me because I was, you know, one of the topics I can go on about is Twin Peaks, as I'm sure I have gone on about to both of you before. So I was going on to him about it, and he he said, I haven't seen Twin Peaks, but from what you're describing, it sounds like you really like Atlanta. And I sort of sat on that for almost six months. <laughs> and then last night, instead of watching a movie, I was like, I, I have, wow, Atlanta's only a half hour. That's even less investment than an hour-long TV show like <laughs> the ones I have been watching. Let's go. And I was hooked, and it definitely has some Twin Peaks, like, really... Some really weird stuff happens. It is, on the average, funnier than Twin Peaks. And obviously, it's set in Atlanta in a completely different setting than the Pacific Northwest. Less spooky, but funnier. So that's the trade-off you're making. It also, though, I I really liked it. But I, I couldn't keep watching because it's a little bit stressful. Like it's it's too it's a little bit real. It gets real. It's like man, ugh, this this sucks. Like and this means everything. This country sucks. Society sucks. Uh, so I had to stop watching. But I do plan to continue watching. It just wasn't something I could watch for four hours. Uh, so yeah, if you liked Twin Peaks. Or you've heard me talk about Twin Peaks and you think you might like it, but you don't want to watch a TV show from 1990, try Atlanta. Plus, it has Donald Glover in it, so how bad can it be? Yeah. Yeah, he's a, uh, I think he's a creator or co creator on the show. Writer? He's, <clears> he's heavily I think he's the, he's the creator and he's in the show. He's also the main character. Um, yeah, he's a busy guy. Um, yes. Very cool. Atlanta airing on FX, available where? Where do you watch it? Uh, Hulu. It's on Hulu. There you go. I'm sure it's on... I don't actually know for sure if it's on iTunes, but I'm sure it is. I might just buy it on iTunes because there's no other show I want to watch on Hulu now that Handmaid's Tale is over. Is it? Was it good? It was good. Speaking of stressful shows, Mm -hmm. dear God. Yeah, but I think... Okay, I, I, I was thinking about this a lot last night. I think Handmaid's Tale does a really good job of, of towing the line between, like, stressful and, like, the release. The stress and the release, mm. and you get, you get the payoff. It's not a season-long wait for the payoffs. There are, there are payoffs along the way. And what, what Atlanta kind of felt like was... I got this with some of the later office seasons, which I really liked. Uh, and some of like Parks and Rec where it's just, it's awkward comedy where they're like, let's just be as awkward as possible. And that's funny. It's like, no, it's not. It's just really uncomfortable. Like too real, too real, too real. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a little bit ridiculous, but it's because you care about the characters. Like they made you care about the characters that you care at all about the fact that so-and-so's, being this obtuse or whatever, right? So it's a it's a double edged sword. And I felt like, yeah, I, I cared I immediately cared so much about the characters in Atlanta that when it, they started to get into this like office territory of like, oh I can't do anything to anyone why can't anyone do anything right? I'm like I'm turning it up. I can't I can't deal with it. I wish I cared less about them. Um anyways that's my rant. I feel uh, I really like the last couple seasons of The Office, but they went so whole hog on the awkwardness is funny well thing and michael scott was such an over-the-top character to begin with that you're like okay when he does crazy things it's funny but when the rest of the characters who are supposed to be more grounded get into ridiculous situations it's a whole nother story yeah and i really didn't like what the famous person who came after michael scott uh uh robert california no, I liked Robert, I liked Robert California. I thought Robert California was amazing. Oh, it, it was it, the, Idris Elba. Famous, no, 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 no. The famous guy whose name was D'Angelo Vickers in the the show, but is the famous guy who played him. His name is. I have no idea what you're talking about. 
Oh my god, he's a famous person. He's not Adam Sandler. Just because you say Will Ferrell. Thank you, Will Ferrell. Just because you're saying famous <laughs> uh-huh. person. Anyways, we got there. Yeah, well, yeah, it was a bit. Now, um. We have, like, a minute, but we had a question in the chat that we would be remiss if we quit without answering, which oh, is, yeah. Dan was talking about Breath of the Wild. Oh, yeah. Big fan. They want to know what games Colby and I are playing. Ah. And I... I, oh, I hope I know the answer to this. Well, you know the answer to mine. I don't play games, so... <laughs> none. Uh, I downloaded The Witcher, and I I played it for, like, three times for, like, 15 minutes at a time. Uh, I honestly, at first I liked it. And then, uh, since then it's gone downhill. Gone downhill? <laughs> Just like, I don't know. The inventory stuff seems over the top and I haven't even done anything yet. It just seems elaborate. Like I look at the inventory screen and I'm confused and that makes me like not want to play anymore. Um, I think I'm on the part where you have to, I I will say I did. So I'm on the part where you have to kill that Griffin right at the beginning. And I liked all the lead up to killing the Griffin. Like the, the investigation stuff was pretty cool. And like talking to the people was cool. Um, I haven't killed the Griffin yet because it's hard. It is hard. You need to, I forget which button it is. The sidestep button. Mm -hmm. That's an important one. That's all. Yeah. The roll it's rolling, right? Yeah, yeah. The I f- rolling I f- is all about it in the monster fights. I found it to be a little clunky as far as games go. Like it feels clunky. So I was also thinking about this recently. I think we talked about this recently. You told me this. I was thinking about one of my least favorite games ever that I know you two have a lot of history with is Assassin's Creed. Mm. Assassin's Creed could be an amazing game. Like the premise, ah, like you you've had such ri- you have such fertile ground. But the gameplay itself is so stupid <laughs> where there's no consequence. Like, you blow your cover. It's like, all right, I, I guess I'm just going to press X or whatever, like, the, the counter button is. First of all, only one, you're surrounded by guards. There's two dozen guards around you. Only one is ever going to attack at a time. And as long as you press the right button at the right time or just keep holding block, you won't die. And, in fact, if you press the counter button, you'll eventually win. And you just... You you just drop yourself in the middle of the town square, kill everyone, and then kill the person you're going after. It's like that's that's uh, it makes it it takes away the whole payoff because it's not actually hard. You're invincible, mm-hmm. and that's why I liked about The Witcher. Like you start the game, and not only do you not have a good weapon or good armor or like all of your powers, but you also have to learn how to like okay. There's, like, a way I can swing the sword that's slow, and that's good because it does a lot of damage, but it sucks because it, like, then I'm vulnerable afterwards. There's a way that's fast, and I just need to move around. And if you're surrounded by people, you're dead. You can't be surrounded by people. And so you can't just, like, walk into the middle of, like, a, a camp of bandits and be like, all right, I'm going to fuck all of you up. It's like, no, you can't. You're only one person. No matter how many, like, cool spells you get. Yeah. How did you feel? They'll all attack you at the same time. Yeah. How did you feel about Horizon? I liked Horizon. Yeah, I I thought Horizon had a very similar thing. Like, Mm. there's no point in the game where you can just run up to a moderate, even a moderately powerful dinosaur robot thing and autopilot it. Yeah. Yeah. I liked. See, I. I, it does remind me of Horizon a little, but I feel like the 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 controls in Horizon, like the actual like combat gameplay, is like so much smoother and mm-hmm. less unpleasant. Like, uh, but I don't know. Uh, you just need to practice. Yeah, I offered Sean. I will. I will co-pilot any one of you through this game. <laughs> yeah, well, right. Dan did such a great job Fair of teaching enough. me Smash that <laughs> there, there's nothing he can't teach me. I believe in him. Challenge accepted. You're going to regret that. Uh, (laughs) All right. Well, we are out of time for this episode. 
Uh, but thanks, everybody, for joining us on this. First of all, thanks, everybody, who joined us live, uh, Zach and Percy and Gail and Emily and everybody uh, who's chatting along with us. We love when people do that Monday nights, 10, 15 Eastern on Twitch and Facebook. Of course, you can get the show anytime on our website, don'tpanic.io. The audio and the video editions are there, as well as links to all the picks. So don't worry about remembering them. You can just go to the website, find them there. Be sure to subscribe to us wherever you get podcasts, Overcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, uh, Stitcher, you name it, we're probably there, and the video version as well on YouTube. And, of course, follow us at Don't Panic Show on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Don't Panic Show, and you can email us, Don't Panic Show at gmail.com. That wraps up this episode. Uh, on behalf of Colby and Dan, I am Sean. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time for more tech news and fun times here on Don't Panic. <laughs>